Welcome to episode 11 of my Gatton CNC router build. Now, in this episode is kind of the episode that most of us have been waiting for, especially me. It's time to go ahead and plug all the stepper motors into the drive box, fire it up, test drive it for the first time. Now, when it comes to plugging in the Xylotex drive box, it really is plug and play. It is as simple as that. And everything is already figured out for you. Now here I have, this is the old style uh, drive box. As you can see, it only has the single parallel port up front. And there's the power port, the axis cables, uh, on off switch, and a fan here up front. The cables coming out of the box are all color coded. And it's real, real easy to hook it up and it's real difficult to mess it up as long as you pay attention to the color code. Now your drive box will come with documentation. I'll go ahead and briefly touch on it here. Basically, the yellow is your Y axis, the blue is your A axis, and these two are going to be slaved together in our case, uh, with my gantry moving in the Y axis. The red is the X axis, and the green is the Z axis. That's basically all you need to know, and if you can keep those four colors straight, you've got this. Now, because of the size of my machine, I went ahead and I ordered six foot extension cables. I kind of went a little overboard. I got a little trigger happy online and got the whole set. I probably did not need the extension cables for my Y axis because the Y motors are fixed. They don't move at all but I went ahead and ordered the whole set while I was ordering some other things from Jeff over at Xylotex because, you know, that just wasn't all that much. But if you're in a position yourself to make your own extension cables, go for it. About the only thing I would suggest would be to make sure you use shielded cable and that's just to block out any interference from, uh, oh, say, your router or any other electrical equipment, especially motors that you might have running in the shop. Go ahead and hook up my Z axis first, which means I'll get this axis cable separated from the from the X. And now I've got male and a female plug here on the extension cable. I've got a female plug up here. So I'll plug the male extension in here, and these are keyed. A couple of three different ways. They're almost but not quite 100% Murphy proof and it really is that easy. Uh, imagine you could probably plug one in backwards but you would really have to hammer on it or start cutting up plugs. So if it's not slipping together real easy, turn it. You've got it trying to plug it in wrong. Okay so there's my extension cable but I can run all the way across the gantry now, which you probably couldn't see. And now I can plug that end into the cable coming out of the uh, drive box. Okay, with all four of my extension cables plugged into their respective axes, I can now go ahead and start plugging these into the cables that come out of the drive box. I still do not have the drive box. I don't even have the power cord plugged into it, and I don't have the parallel cord plugged into it either. That'll be next. So it's just another case of color coding and matching them up. Yellow to yellow. Red to red. Green to green. And blue to blue. That's it. That's all there is to it. Now we can go ahead and connect our DB25 parallel cable, which is plugged into the back of the computer via the parallel port. Now, I'm using an older Windows XP computer and I'm running this through the parallel port. If you use uh, a UC100 for uh, USB, your connection will be a little bit different. 
If you're using an Ethernet smooth stepper, your connection is going to be a little bit different. But I'm using an older desktop PC running Windows XP and I run through the parallel port. So this cable is plugged straight into the back of the computer that I'm going to be using. That's good enough. Now take the power cable, plug it in, and we are ready to fire it up and drive it around. Okay, I've moved my camera around to just about every corner of this uh, little bitty shop and there really is no place that I can set it up where I'm not going to be in the way. So we're going to do the best we can and I apologize in advance for all the gratuitous shots of my shoulder, my back, and the back of my head, anything else that happens to come into frame. Uh, I have my computer started up. It is fired up. Mach 3 is loaded, running. I have not hit the reset button yet. And the main reason for that is because, well, let me just explain. This is my normal routine. I come in when I'm going to use the CNC. First thing I do is I fire up the computer. I load Mach 3, then I don't touch that reset button at all. Then I come over and I turn on the, dr the drive box. Now we should hear a loud click. The fans start running. That click is the motors locking up as power is applied to it. And there we go. So, nothing's burst into flames. Everything is great so far. Now I need to step over here and hit that reset button. And the reason I do it this way, just as a note to myself, the reason I do it this way is because that way I've got the computer turned on, the controller software is in charge of the CNC, and it's in reset condition. When I turn that drive box on, it's not going to move. When I cleared reset, I was listening for a movement on any of the axes, I heard nothing. So we're good on that score. But basically, I want that drive box to be under Mach 3's control at all times. That's why I don't hit the reset button, and that's why I make sure it's turned on before the drive box is ever turned on. Now, for the part that we've all been waiting for, i got my keyboard way out here, where hopefully I can use it. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my X over here a little bit so that we can hear it. And I'll do that with the cursor right button and hope it moves right. Okay, it does move right. Now we'll go cursor left. Okay, we're good there. Now we'll go Z up. For that I'll hit page up. And we have Z up. Now I'll hit page down to go Z down. Okay, now I'm going to have to get into some serious cable management, as I said, simply because I've got cables all over the place and this is not a good condition. Okay, so I have X and I have Z. Now, the biggie, let's go for Y. Now, when I first test out this Y, I'm just going to tap it. And I'm going to be watching both of these axes to make sure that they're both moving in the same direction. And one motor is not reversed from the other. They very well could be. I don't know. So we're going to find out right now. Let's bring the Y back towards me. Okay, they are both moving in the same direction and they're both moving in the correct direction. Now, if it would have come to pass that one of them was reversed and when I pulled it forward, one of the motors tried to push it backwards, I would immediately stop, go back the other direction, just one tap to get it to where it's no longer racked, shut off the drive box, bring the axes into square with the table, then get into Mach 3 and reverse my motor. Now I'm not going to go into any hot and heavy Mach 3 settings in this video. Dave. Gatton did an excellent job of explaining all of the Mach 3 settings a couple of times. And I'll put a card up here right now to a link to his video 
explaining the Mach 3 settings that you need for your Gatton CNC on your Xylotex drive box. But with everything going now, we appear to be rocking and rolling. Now, this is the most basic setup that there is. I just got each of the cables plugged into their respective axes. I have the dry box connected straight to the computer. I have no accessories at all plugged into this. No switches, no touch plates, nothing. The only accessory I do have plugged in, and that's simply because it plugs into the computer and not the drive box, is my Xbox 360 controller. Now I'm going to try it. Z. That works. Y. Oops, X, excuse me. Y. What a hunt. Runs real smooth. Okay. I'm really, really happy with this. I'm very happy with this. I'm just trying to be very careful so I don't rip a cable out before I ever get a chance to use it. But listen to that saying. No moaning, no groaning. No binding. That's really, really nice. I'm very happy with this. Very happy. Oh boy. <laughs> you know, I'm like a five year old when I get the one of these things working. I really am. I could just stand here and play with it and drive it around forever. I'll save you that, and uh, we'll call this the end. I'd like to thank you very much for watching me play around like a kid in a toy store, and I'd like to thank you very much for following this entire build. For all intents and purposes, the Gatton CNC build is finished. There are a few accessories I need to hook up. I got to do some serious cable management. I need to run it back and forth quite a bit under power and get this angle broken in a little bit, check for binding, make sure everything is as aligned as well as possible, then screw down my bearing and motor support uh, motor mounts on my Y. But other than that, all that's left really is lipstick and mascara. And uh, we're basically done. Now, again, thank you very much for watching me play around. And uh, if you got anything at all out of this video, or if you're as excited as I am, yeah, there may be one or two, give me a thumbs up down there. If you'd like to go back and watch the entire Gatton CNC build from start to finish, I'll put a link in the description below to a playlist of all the episodes of this build. And if you'd like to see what I've got up my sleeve next for this, there's a few more little upgrades coming and accessories to be added, consider subscribing to my channel. But whether you subscribe to my channel or not, again, thanks very much for watching. Y'all take care. <laughs>